the emergence of optical networks on the excess side is a relatively newer phenomenon. Relatively means it has been here for say last two decades. But at the core side, optical networks have been there for quite some time. It is important to just look at the technology from the access side perspective. How did it gain that much importance? And what are the variants of it? Specifically, we'd look at the optical networks in the context of NGNs. We'd explore the motivation and then we'd look at the standards which have emerged in the passive, passive optical networks domain. Since the optical networks are a much high data rate replacement of the traditional cable and DSL networks, it is the applications which determine if the optical networks are going to meet the due requirements. Although in the optical domain, the data rate that can be achieved is of the order of terabits per second or more. But at the end of the day, it is the end user using a certain application and the equipment that the user is using to, to, to determine the overall data rate requirement. The end user equipment that is typically used is normally a desktop or its variant with its own processing capability of a packet or a frame. The memory, which is available in the form of a transmit buffer or a receive buffer, and the availability of the interfaces through which this computer is going to put its data onto the optical network. Traditionally, we know that either it is the Ethernet or Wi-Fi. The optical network standards which have emerged as a consequence to the need for deploying fiber optic in the access side are known as the passive optical networks. Um, the most basic standard that emerged some time back is by the International Telecom Union Q.834. This standard is primarily meant to interface the optical network with the ATM technology. Since the ATM technology is a switching technology at layer 2, the passive optical network serves as the physical layer for the ATM networks. And this ATM integration with passive optical networks is known as the ATM passive optical network. It was proposed and later adopted by the ITUT, by the Full Service Access Network Working Group. That was basically a consortium led by some companies from the telecommunication and optics world. The data rate that was poised for compatibility with the ATM was 622 megabits per second. It is the SDH sonnet hierarchy of STM level 4 at the downstream and the upstream it is STM1 that is 155 megabits per second. Now the scope of integrating work from the access side to the network side is between the central office and the user equipment. The next standard that proposes high data rates is the G.983. As the name suggests, it is Broadband Passive Optical Network. Broadband Passive Optical Network provides backward compatibility to the broadband technologies such as DSL and cable. Since the technology is all optical, so it means that the data rates coming from the other broadband technologies need to be compatible. The data rates which are available in the downstream are STM1, 155 megabits per second, STM4, 622 megabits per second, or even higher at the rate of 1.244 gigabits per second. The upstream, however, is only STM1 and STM4. The optical distribution, that is how the overall distribution is done from the central office to the end users is also based on optical network and it is, we have discussed it earlier, on a device called a passive splitter. Typically, 
in ITU standards, the ratio is 1 ratio 32. It means one fiber strand actually splits into 35, 32 outgoing fiber strands on the uh, demultiplexer side. On the multiplexing side, it is the 32 fiber optic strands that actually uh, emerge into one optical strand. Then we have the ITU G.984 standard. This is actually known as the gigabit capable passive optical network, or in other words, GPON. Here, the data rate is significantly higher. For instance, as compared to the last um, standard, here it is double. That is, instead of 1.2 gigabits per second, it is 2.4. And in the downstream, and in the upstream, it is again 1.2 or 2.4. As you can see, since there is a provision to have 2.4 gigabits per second in the upstream, so there's a likelihood of implementing the symmetric um, service between the two endpoints. Here also, the optical distribution network is passively uh, deployed. An important consideration by the ITU and IEEE is, it's quite interesting, that when they move from one version or from one variant to the other, IEEE and ITU look for significant gains in the data rates that it, they provide. A typical understanding in the ITU community is that a data rate increase should be twice or fourfold. But in the IEEE community, there's an understanding that the data rate can go as high as 10 times. And we have seen that, for instance, when we moved from basic Ethernet to fast Ethernet to gigabit Ethernet. So it's an interesting analogy that we see here. Then in the IEEE arena, we have 802.3 AH. Now, we are well versed with 802.3, that is, it's an Ethernet standard. But putting AH actually makes it an EPON standard. EPON actually means Ethernet Passive Optical Network. Here, we are going to talk uh, a lot about it, but here for now, we just have to understand that EPON is basically providing access on uh, access technology as a replacement using Ethernet. So Ethernet is no more a LAN protocol here, but Ethernet is a protocol that is used in the first mile or the last mile. So an entire suite of Ethernet app, uh, protocols, which include ARP, um, RARP, are also used in conjunction with Ethernet. So Ethernet here is on the access side. It works between the central office and the user equipment. So sometimes it is also known as Ethernet in the first mile or Ethernet in the last mile. It's again a jargon that is used by the consortium that promoted the deployment of EPON across various access sites. Now let's look at the architecture for broadband passive optical network. Here we see certain entities. We've seen such a network deployment before. On the left hand side, we have CO, the control office, central office. We have the OLT, the optical line termination unit. We have the ONTs on the user equipment side, optical network termination. The interface between the network and the service is known as service net node interface. And the interface between the user and the network is known as the user network interface. So we see on the service side, we have SNI. And on the user side, we have UNI. Although there are no hard and fast rules, because here you can see that a typical distance of 20 kilometers is encouraged. It's a physical distance. But it can be extended logically up to 60 kilometers also. Here you can see again that like GPON and like ATM PON, here also a typical splitter and aggregator is deployed in the ratio of 1 ratio 32, but it can be increased to 1 ratio 64 or in certain situations 1 ratio 128. So in BPON, what we conclude is that uh, the data rate emphasis is to achieve uh, broadband data rates of STM1, STM4, that is 155 megabits per second, 622 megabits per second. So in all, using dedicated fiber to each user side or each customer premises and using respective ONTs to have 
our demultiplexed individual user traffic, we can achieve such high data rates. Let's summarize the standardized bit rates which come from various PON standards. We've seen most of these. Uh, an interesting comparison here would be to look at the downstream and upstream bit rates which are placed across the BPON, EPON, and GPON. GPON being the fastest goes up to 2.4 gigabits per second, both for the upstream as, as well as for the downstream. An interesting observation can be made regarding the choice of wavelengths. Normally, in optical communication, low loss and low dispersion are the primary windows of transmission. So here we can see that in upstream, 1.3 nanometers is used all across these different standards. In downstream, there is a little bit of variation. 1550 nanometer is used all across. 1310 is used upstream all across. But there is a slight modification uh, depending upon the standard that we are talking about. For instance, in VPON and GPON, we are seeing 90 nanometers, but we don't see that in EPON. An essential observation that you can right away make is that in EPON, it is mostly the Ethernet traffic that is coming from the desktop users. So a high data rate is not much of an expectation in uh, EPON, which is coming from individual users, but it can be catered for to be as high as possible. And the transmission technology is also shown in the last row.